That's exciting stuff. Man, we're ready to get back with our kids, to be back in the room. I'm excited. Parents, I know y'all are excited because trying to have two and three kids sitting beside you and corral them is, is probably one of the hardest things we'll ever do and one of the hardest things we'll ever face. So you're ready for them to do that. They've gone back to school, and you're ready for them to go back to their, uh, their times and their meetings so you can take a break, right? So uh, this, this has been a difficult, difficult uh, uh, summer, and uh, it's, we're, we're ready to get some things back to normal. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're in the room. I'm glad you're watching online. I'm fired up. I had a vacation last week. My face is a little bit darker because me and my wife was in the sun a little bit, and we enjoyed one another, and I was able to hear from God, and I've got a word I'm ready to deliver. Are you ready, Harvest Time? Man, I'm ready. I'm fired up. and three cup of coffee, so I am ready to go. If you don't mind, as is becoming our custom, can we stand up and read God's Word together? If you're physically able, just stand up with us. We're going to honor God as we read. If you'll open your Bibles uh, to Genesis chapter 6, we're going to start in verse 5, and I believe we'll go to, uh, to uh, verse 14. And so, man, I'm fired up, and I'm ready to give God's Word to you if you're ready. Hopefully, if you did not walk in this place ready, when you leave, you'll feel like that you have been slammed in the face with the Word of God, and I'm ready to go. Are you ready? All right, Genesis chapter 6, verses 5. Then the Lord God, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air. For I am sorry, two times he says, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Everybody say that. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Verse 11. The earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, God spoke, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth, make yourself an ark of gopher wood, whatever that is, and make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. God goes on to say how to, do, how to build the ark. He goes on to say how many stories and how wide it should be and how long it should be, and he goes into great detail, and he tells Noah all to do. And all, if, you, if you've read this story, hopefully you know this story and you know more about, about it because you've watched Evan Almighty. We're in 2020, y'all. This, uh, this is what people know about Noah, I'm finding. That uh, hopefully your kids are going to know more about Noah when they walk out of here than they did when they walked in here. And hopefully as adults, we'll have a little bit of a greater understanding in how to live like a Noah in 2020. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your spirit. I thank you, God, for your presence, for you are here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We thank you, Father, that we have experienced your presence, Lord, through our praise and worship today that we have given unto you, Lord. We've, we've lifted up our voices. We've lifted our hearts. We've opened our hearts and our minds to you. I ask, Lord, that you would help me to say, Lord, only what you would have me to say, nothing more, nothing less. In the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray, amen. And be seated if you can in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> in the last series, um, we acknowledged that no one is perfect. We did a series on uh, the emotional health, the emotions of our mind, our, 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 our mind, our, our spirit, that, that we would be emotionally um, uh, well. And that God made us with emotions, He made us with feelings, He made us with all of these things. And we said that weakness is part of life. And after, after this series, I felt like I need to come back with a faith message on Noah. And emotions are part of life. We acknowledge that, we know that. And I've got a question for you today, and I'm kind of expecting an answer a little better than the first crowd, because I can tell that you guys are an incredible group. 
Here's my question. Do we live by feelings or do we live by faith? Okay, that's pretty good. That was an overwhelming majority that said we live by faith. Is If you can lift up your hand and say, I second that. We live by faith and not by sight, right? So here's what we do a lot of times, though. Even when we don't even, we don't even mean to do this. Hey, Bill, how are you feeling? How are you doing? What we're doing is we're saying we're acknowledging that we have feelings. We're acknowledging that we have emotions. We're acknowledging all of these things when maybe what we should be doing is saying, Hey, Bill, how's your faith? Now, God made us with, he made us with emotions, he made us with these things, and we know that emotions, we know that feelings is all part of life, and God gave them to us, but as people of faith, I just ask you, do we live by faith, or do we live by feelings? We said we live by faith, so maybe we should be asking one another as people of faith. Faith, maybe we should say, how's your faith, Brother Dexter? Maybe that's what we should, uh, our greeting should be with one another. Without a word from God, you cannot have faith. Without a word from God, you cannot have biblical faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it's not on the screen. I just threw it in my notes. At the last minute, we walk by faith and not by sight. So what is faith? What is faith? How should we be walking as people of faith? Are we people of faith, people of feelings? We're people of faith. Without a word from God, we have no basis for living a life of biblical faith. Faith is not a leap in the dark. Faith is a step into God's light. Man, that's good. If you're taking notes, you probably ought to write that down. Faith is not a leap in the dark. Faith is a step into God's light. Now, Psalms 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We all know that. Romans 10, 17 says, So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 11, 1 tells us, So that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. The substance or the substructure or the foundation that we stand on. It is a firm foundation, a substructure. We can count on it. We can stand on it. It's really there. I don't have to have much faith to know that this is really there. It's going to hold me up. It's a substructure. It's a foundation. I've seen the concrete under it. I know it's there. Before they put this LVT down, there was concrete, and I've seen it, and I know I can stand on it. I don't have to have any faith to stand on it. It's really there. Now, it's the substance of things that we hope for, the evidence of things not seen. What is this thing's hope for? It's to wait with joy, with confidence. To wait with joy while we're standing on what we know is there in confidence that we will see what our eyes cannot see. And we have faith because that is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Our new series, Bible Stories, and you're going to hear over the next few weeks some Bible stories from the Word of God. This next series, we're going to talk about Noah today. In Hebrews chapter 11, we know Noah is introduced as a man of faith at work. He has faith, and he's also at work. He has faith and he does things. He's found favor or he's found grace with God. He is a just man and a righteous man who's found favor with God. He's blameless according to scripture among the people of his generation. Noah walked with God. Say walk with God. Noah walked with God and he found favor with God and it was based, that favor is based on his connect, it was based on his connected to his walk. His favor was connected to his walk. Walking with God is Noah. Noah walked with God, he's righteous, he's blameless, he is blameless among his generation, among his people, and he has spiritual integrity when no one else had spiritual uh, integrity. He had character, you could count on it. Whatever he did, he did it because he's walking with God. Now, God was at the center of his 
thoughts at the center of all that he did. If you remember a few months ago, we did a message on being, God being the center of our life, the center of our thought process, that everything that we do comes out of him being at the center of, of, of our universe, center of what we are. Now, he's not number one, he's the center. He's, the, he's in the middle of every decision that we make. We don't prioritize him and put him at number one. This was Noah. At the center of his thought process, at the center, he was the only one of his generation walking with God. Now, some of you, you may have made a profession of faith. You may have lifted your hand in a gospel message somewhere and repented of your sins. And you may have said, you know, I, 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 God, I want you to forgive me of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. I want to walk with you. But you've never acknowledged him in your walk. A good first step, remember, faith is not a leap in the dark, but it is a step into God's light. So you say, I've been forgiven of my sins, but I haven't taken a step into his light. A good first step might be that you just acknowledge God at work in your daily walk. Now that's a step. We're a place of steps. We believe in next steps and spiritual steps. You say, I, I've asked God to forgive me, and now you need to acknowledge Him in your walk. Acknowledge Him that He's with you when you go to work. Acknowledge Him that He is with you when you go to school. In being in the center of your universe, in the center of your life, that you would expect to, to consult with Him and say, Holy Spirit, which way should I go? Should I go this way? Should I go that way? That's taking a step. That's allowing God to guide you. Let's look at Genesis 6 again. The Lord saw, so the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become. He saw that every single inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was evil all the time. Verse 8, but Noah. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was walking with God when no one else was walking with God. Noah was the exception to the rule. Have you ever heard the expression that says, that guy is walking to the beat of his own drum? You ever heard that? You ever said that about somebody? Okay, Noah was walking to the rhythms and the beat of God's rhythm in his life. He was listening to God. He was walking with God and considering God in all that he did. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight. This is verse 11. And it was full of violence. God saw how the corrupt the earth had become and all the people were corrupt in their ways. And God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to the people uh, for the earth is filled with violence. Noah lived in a time of corruption and evil. The only one. He stood out. The demonic world had gripped the entire culture. Noah didn't confront. He did not, um, he did not conform to culture. Noah refused. His goal was not to be popular with all the people. As your pastor, it is not my goal to be popular with you. It is my goal to listen to what the Holy Spirit says for me to say. It is my job to listen and say, how am I to lead this church, Holy Spirit? I'm not going to listen to man. I'm going to listen to God. So I'm not trying to be popular with you. I'm trying to just listen to the voice of God and lead us into his paths of righteousness. That's my job as the pastor. I'm not going to listen to what this one says or that one says. I'm going to listen to what he says. And when he says, this is the way you can guarantee that I will walk in those ways. My goal is not to be pleasing unto men. My goal is to be pleasing unto God. And that was Noah. He didn't care what this one did, that one did, where that one went, where that one went. All he wanted to do is say, God, what do you want me to do? Standing against the culture. See, our culture right now is pressurized. Our culture right now is putting a squeeze on people of faith. Our culture right now is pressing people of faith. In fact, when Jesus was in the garden, in fact, Gethsemane means the place of pressing. Some of you have been to the garden of Gethsemane with me, and we, 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 we saw some, some olive presses. Culture was squeezing Everything was squeezing, and whatever is inside you right now as a Christian because of this culture that we are in, whatever's inside you is about to be exposed. That went over about like I thought it would. 
Whatever's inside you is about to be exposed. See, if you're walking with God, you should feel some pressure right now. You should feel some squeezing right now. You should feel some pressing right now because of this culture that we live in. All I can tell you is in this church, that churches across the nation should be the one place that you do not feel that pressure. It should be the one place that you do not feel that squeeze. It should be the one place that you do not feel pressed. This should be a safe place. As we said two, three weeks ago, this should be a safe place for every man and woman and boy and girl to walk into this place no matter where you come from, no matter how much money you got, no matter what you look like. This should be the one safe place that you walk in and not feel the culture of this world squeezing you. This is a sign that we'll put out in front of everyone to see. Welcome home. Welcome to a place that you can be you. Welcome home. You don't have to be perfect. Welcome home. You don't have to look like everybody else. You can just listen to God and welcome home. We're glad you're here. We know you're messed up because so are we. I'm messed up. You're messed up. Let's just acknowledge it that we all need a loving Savior. I don't have it all together. I know you think, some of you think I might, but I don't. Just ask my wife. She can tell you that I don't have it all together because you don't either. You say, well, you're supposed to have it all together. I'm doing the best I can. I'm just being honest. I'm just being transparent because there's a sign out front that says, Welcome home all those who are weary and heavy laden. We're glad you're here. Welcome to the safety of the house of God. We're not going to shoot you because you're not right. Because I'm not right. Ain't nobody right. We're just all struggling together. Amen? You see, there could be somebody in this place that you don't understand their expression of praise. You may have looked at me this morning, I might have got a little fired up this morning. I might have jumped up and down a little bit. I might have shouted just a little bit. I might have had an expression of praise that you don't understand. But let me explain something to you. I come into this place because this is the one place I don't feel the pressure of the world. This is the one place that I can say, God, I need you more than anything else. I'm going to lift my voice. I'm going to lift my hearts. I'm going to lift my hand up to you. I'm going to say thank you for meeting me where I am. I'm going to shout a hallelujah and turn it up a little louder because I will tell you this. This is a place that you can do that because the world's squeezing you. And this is the place, that, a place of safety. And you say, well, I don't really quite understand that. I got a little bit too much Presbyterian in me for all of that, Pastor. Well, maybe you don't feel the pressure. Maybe you don't feel the squeeze that I feel. Getting fired up today. I had a vacation last week. <laughs> Three cups of coffee, Russell. Praise God. This is a safe place. When I grew up, it was kind of normal. Now, it was a long time ago. Yeah, Bree says, yep, it sure was. When I grew up, it was normal to go to church. When I grew up, it was normal. Danielle, it was normal. We went to the same high school, graduated about the same time. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, we, it was normal. Most every kid had some kind of a youth group that they went to. And, and, and you, would, you would back your car out with your family in the car, and you'd all come to church. And maybe you didn't go every week, but that was pretty normal. Let me tell you all something. It ain't that day anymore. This is a post-Christian culture, and you should be feeling a squeeze if you're walking with God because we ain't normal. It used to be normal. If you walk with God, you should be set apart. The Bible even calls us a peculiar people, a little bit different and a little bit odd. I'm looking at some little bit different. <laughs> And a little bit odd. <laughs> I hope I could just be me, y'all. I hope I can just give you the word of God and just tell you like it is. It's not normal anymore. We live in a post-Christian society. You don't have to try to be different anymore. You just got to be a Christian. Uh, Jameson, where are you at, buddy? Jameson, come here, buddy. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Come here, come here, come here. Hurry. Jameson, get up. Come on, brother. Jump on up here. Come right over here. Y'all give Jameson a hand right now. <laughs> hurry, 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 Jameson. Hurry. We're going to go for a walk. We're going to go for a walk, okay? you got to stay with me, and i got to stay with you. Watch this. This is the way it works. You ready, Jameson? You're, are you ready? This is James Perry, son. Oh. <laughs> Watch this kid. He's probably going to dance or something. Ready? Here we go. We're going to walk over there. Not too fast. We don't have a lot of runway. You ready? Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> now, 
Now, Jameson, we're together, right? We're walking together. You're close to me and I'm close to you, right? All right, now, let's, let's turn around, let's go the other way. I'm walking with him, he's walking with me. Now, I'm going to tell you something, Jameson, come right over here. I'm going to tell you something because you're standing next to me, you'll be able to hear me. Okay? I'll turn my mic off, guys, so get ready for this. I want to see if you can hear me. Dexter, you see if you can hear me, all right? Jameson's right here. Dexter's all the way over there. I'm going to tell you something. You tell me if you can hear me, Dexter. Dexter, did you hear me? Why didn't you hear me? Not that I just wasn't talking to you, but you're not near me. God is speaking to you. There could be so much other voices going on and so much more violence going on and so much other things happening that you've allowed into your world that now you're not walking right with God. You're not in close proximity to Him. You can't hear a God that you're not standing next to. You can't hear a God that you're not walking with. You can't hear a God that's not right next to you. He don't have to shout. He should just be able to whisper softly in your ear, Jameson, let's just take a walk. Now, Jameson, did you hear what I said? You did? What did I say? You already forgot? <laughs> and see, that's, what, that's us. That's us. God speaks to us. We heard him. But we forgot what he said already. Man, you did good. That was awesome. Y'all give Jameson a hand. Your dad will buy you a steak today. I told him, I said, I like Corvettes. But see, you didn't hear me say that because you weren't walking with me. You didn't hear me say that because you're not in close proximity to me. See, proximity is part of our problem in a world full of corruption. Proximity seems to be a problem of walking with God in a world full of violence, in a world full of noises, in a world full of people speaking, in a world full of people shouting at one another, this one against that one. Proximity seems to be a problem in the house of God, among His people. The reason why we don't hear from God sometimes is we are too far from God. I didn't expect that many amens from that. I just expect, I hope I'm stepping on some toes today, and I hope that you're being challenged today by the Word of God. And I'm going to hurry. I'm going to give you three things. These are three lessons on how to live like a Noah in 2020. And if you brought your piece of paper and you brought your pencil, I want you to write these three things down. Here we go. Number one, God speaks to those walking with Him, so walk with God. Everybody say, walk with God. God speaks to those who are walking with him, so walk with God. God will give you thoughts. He'll give you perspectives. He will give you ideas. He will give you an invention. He will give you all kinds of things that you can come up with. He'll show you, Wendell, how to make a better turkey call. He'll show you exactly what to do if you're walking with him and you can hear his voice and he speaks to you. He'll show you how to make something, a little invention that, that could like change the hunters all over the place. He could give you something, but you have to be walking with him and you have to be so close to him that when he speaks to you, 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 you can hear his voice and you're not distracted by other voices. There's no other voices competing. This was Noah. God spoke and Noah did. He will give you ideas. It may be a business idea. It could be uh, something that no one else has thought of. And because you're walking with him, he told it to you because you found grace and you found favor with him. Hebrews 11, 7, this is the heroes of faith chapter. Now, by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. I ain't seen no rain, God. He ain't never seen rain at this point. Being divinely warned of things not yet seen, he moved with godly fear. Another, another version, another translation says, with reverence. He prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Did he do it so he could get rich? Did he do it for any other reason? No, he saved his household. His entire household was saved because he honored God and did what God said to do. Noah had never seen rain. He had never seen probably a boat. He was a long ways from the coast. Why would he need a big boat? Because God said, build a boat. He was walking with God. If God tells you to do something, something supernatural, he tells you to do something huge, it could be that he's about to do something very big in you. He said, don't make any sense. 
Well, it don't make any sense that I'm pastor of this church either. It don't make any sense some of the things that I've done in my life. It don't make any sense. All I know is God said it, and I took that step, and I went, this is crazy. And yeah, it was, and God honored it. This is what I'm looking across the faces of this place. I see your stories. I know your stories. And God has been with you every step of the way. Has it been perfect all the time? Has it been easy all the time? No. But God is with you. And somebody in this place needs to hear that today. He's not left you. He's not forsaken you. He's there. He's always been there. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. He will light your next step up. Lessons on how to live like a Noah in 2020. God speaks to those walking with with him, so walk with God. Number two, trust God when he speaks. Noah says, I've never seen rain. No, and he's been out there for 80 years cutting down gopher wood, whatever that is. He's cutting down trees. He's, he's, he's building this big boat. It don't have a rudder. It don't have a wheel. It don't have a sail. God said, this is how I want you to do it. And then Noah just did it. Yeah, but it's been 80 years, God. I still hadn't seen rain. And he says, you're not done building the boat. You won't see rain till you're done. It'll be premature for you to see the rain until the ark is done, until the boat is finished. Some of you say, I've been doing what God told me to do and nothing has happened well it may be a little premature for you to see you're not through being obedient you're not through trusting he's building something in you so that he can give you your next step don't stop doing the last thing God said to do trust God when he speaks Genesis 6 22 says this thus Noah did according to all that God said all that commanded him so he did this is what Noah did Noah did all that God commanded him to do this is what we do we do part of what God told us to do Noah says I'll do all that God said for me to do and we want to do part of what God said for for us to do and then we stand back and say God where are you at I, 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 you haven't come through. And he's saying, I need you to be like Noah and trust me when I speak, do all that I tell you to do and then it's going to work. He's waiting on us. You see, what work has God called you to? What obedience has God called you to? What is it that he's trying to accomplish? Because obedience comes when we are walking with him. Your walk reveals your obedience, and your obedience reveals your walk. I'm going to say it again, Darren. Somebody's jotting this down. It's going to be really good. They're going to look at it on Wednesday and say, I need to remember that. Your walk reveals your obedience, and your obedience reveals your walk. This was Noah. Noah obeyed God for over 100 years before he saw anything happen. 100 years. We get uncomfortable if we have to share our faith one time. Imagine Noah. Imagine. Over a hundred years, I see, I don't see anything. The entire culture around him is, is depraved. The entire culture around him has is, is full of violence, it's full of corruption, it's full of all these things. We aren't normal anymore. The culture is around us is full of violence, it's full of corruption, and we get a little bit tired and we don't want to do all that God said for us to do, except we want his blessings and we want to see have his covering and we want his peace in our life, and we don't have peace because we're not doing what God wants us to do. Thank you, Joe. If you aren't standing out from the crowd, if you aren't feeling the pressure, if you aren't feeling the squeeze, if you aren't feeling that that culture is doing to Christians, you might want to check your walk. Noah walked with God. You can't hear him unless he's standing next to you. Draw near to me and I'll draw near to you is what the book of James says. All I can tell you is if you want to experience God's joy, you want to experience God's peace, you got to walk with him. You'll hear his voice. I can tell you the atheists are not being silent. The world is not being silent. The college professors teaching your dear children that you're paying big money for them to go to school this year, I guarantee you they will not remain silent. It's time for people of God to stand up and be different than the world. Our culture is squeezing and, and, and whatever's inside you is about to be exposed. Now I'm about to make a radical statement. 
third cup of coffee's wearing off. I'm about to make a bold statement. It's a political statement, so get ready. We're more vocal about our political affiliation than we are our God affiliation. We're more vocal about our political stance than we are about our affiliation with the God that created us. You know, if you've got a political sign in your yard and you haven't shared your faith in the last four years, you might want to check your walk. I told you it was going to be radical. I'm stepping on some toes today. Yeah, I was, went away last week and I enjoyed myself and I heard from God and this is what he said to say. You don't like it? We'll just take it up with him. And I mean that. I love you, but we're more vocal about what we ate this weekend and the pictures of showing our food and, our, and the things that we want to do this weekend rather than, ex, rather than giving God all the praise for our life and, and praise for the food and praise for the things that we can go and do. Okay, I got that off my chest now. You see, a politician cannot save your soul. A political party cannot take you to heaven. Politics is not going to heal your body, and it's not going to give you peace on a dark night. The Lord, the Bible says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? God, be with us and have faith in God. Ted, as you go on Wednesday to get that shoulder repaired, I'm believing that God is going to be with you because you are walking with him, that he is with you, that you will say, God is who I put my trust in. Thank God for the doctor. Thank God for these nurses. And God is with me. I walk in with faith and not fear. I walk about where I go because God is with me. Somebody needs to hear me say today that God has not left you. Lessons on how to live like a Noah in 2020. Number one, God speaks to those walking with him. Walk with God. Number two, trust God when he speaks. And number three, and I'm out of time, Noah worshiped as he trusted. Look at the scripture. By faith, this is Hebrews 11:7 7 in the Amplified. By faith, with confidence in God and confidence in his word. Have confidence in God. Have confidence in his word. By faith faith with confidence in God and his word, Noah being warned by God about the events not yet seen. Remember, this is the faith, this is the substance, the structure that we stand on in hopes of this is standing in joy and confidence that we're going to see what we can't see. This is by not yet seen in reverence he prepared an ark. And, and almost as he worshipped in awe and wonder of God, he worshipped as he built. Worship as you trust. He says, God, I don't see any rain, but I'm going to worship. God, I, I don't see some of the things that you said was going to happen. I'm going to turn it up a little. God, I don't see the thing that, that, that you said was going to happen. I can't see you, but I know you're working. Even when I can't see that he's working, he's working. Even when I don't feel that he's working, he's working. He's doing things on me at my behalf, and he's working all things together for my good because that's what he does for those who are walking with him. Noah says, well, God, I, I don't know how all this is going to turn out, but I'm trusting you. He's saying, I'm going to raise another hallelujah. He says, I'm going, to, I'm going to trust you in the midst of this storm that I've never seen. I've never seen rain. I don't know what it looks like, but I know it's coming. I'm just going to turn up my praise just a little bit more. People's walking by. They're saying, man, that guy's crazy. I'm just going to raise another hallelujah. I'm a little bit different. I'm a little bit peculiar. I'm a little bit strange. I'm a little bit odd, but I'm listening to the drumbeat of God. That was Noah. You got to worship while you trust. In the middle of all of the mess, just turn it up a little bit. Turn up your praise a little bit and say, God, I don't see it yet, but I know you're working. People think you're crazy. That's okay. They already think you're crazy. <laughs> I know you. No, I'm just teasing. No, I'm not. But anyway. In reverence, Noah prepared that ark. Why did he do it? He did it for the salvation of his family. Real men worship. Let me tell you something, Dad. Let me tell you something, Mom. Real men, real women, 
Real moms and dads, they pray. They let their kids hear them pray. They pray over their children when their children don't even know what they're doing. They're teaching real men worship. Real men pray. Real men and women bring their Bibles to church. And they bring their kids to church when it doesn't make any sense. They turn it on, the, on, on Facebook. They turn it on harvesttime.net. They prepare a sanctuary right there in the middle of their living room. They say, kids, gather in. It's time for church. They make a place that's holy, a sanctified place. And they say, now we're going to be set apart. We're a little bit different than the world. We are going to do what God is calling us to do. We, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My son Matt, who's 22, when he, was, when he was young, when he was a little guy, we, we recognized that he had a whole lot of athletic potential in him. And he was, he's left-handed, he played baseball, he was long and lean, tall like his daddy, and a whole lot more athletic than me. Left-handed, he was a pitcher, thanks for that amen over there, you, you've known me a long time. Um, and we tried to give him every advantage that we could give him. We gave him pitching lessons, and we paid money for that. And I think travel ball's great. And we did that, and, and it's all good. But let me tell you something what we decided to do. As for me and my house, we decided that we would be in the house of God. We were going to teach him that being in the house of God was more important than being on the ball field. Now, I want you to hear my pastor's heart. If you're watching online, just trust me. Give me a second. Hear my heart. We played travel ball. You play on Sundays. I get it. But we told the coach, Coach Chris, at the beginning of the season, and we could have played on a lot of teams, but we chose to be on one that didn't travel too far to where we could stay in the house of God. There were many Sundays that care. I would come home. I was on staff at this church. I'd be in the house of God. There was many Sundays that my wife would drive my son to Fayetteville for that Sunday ball tournament. But we found a good Bible-believing church in Springdale and in Fayetteville and in Farmington and in Muldrow and in Salisaw and, and Greenwood and Fort Smith. And my boy went to church wearing his ball uniform. They sat on the back row, and as soon as they said amen, they split and they got to the ball field. But the coach knew this. If you're going to play on Sunday, don't, waste, don't, don't wait to use my boy because we're going to be in the house of God. Now, if we're playing at 10, 30, or 11, or 12, he might be a little late. He'll be there, but he's not going to be in the lineup when it's time to go to church. It's more important that my son be in church than it is about the, 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 the trophies that we don't even remember where they are. In fact, when he moved out of my house to get married, we threw a bunch of that junk away. You know why? Because it's, it's nothing. It means nothing. Is he playing in the major leagues? No. But I tell you what, he's in the house of God. He's serving the Lord. He's serving God. Now I want you to hear my heart. Hear your pastor's heart. It's, you're not going to hell if you're playing in a travel ball. If you're playing travel volleyball, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this. Culture has squeezed us down that says that we have to do this and we have to do that. And I'm telling you, if you want to be a Noah in 2020, if enough Christians would stand up and say, this is, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to be different. We were the only ones on our team that did what we did, but we took a stand. Am I saying that that's why he's still in the house of God serving the Lord today? I don't know. I can't take credit for that. All I can tell you is this. If enough Christians would look at the culture of today and say, we need more God rather than less God, they would start having uh, uh, some kind of a, uh, a service out on the field at 9 a.m. They wouldn't play ball from 9 to 10. And one of those coaches that are godly, they would give a great Bible story and they would deliver a message and they would have worship out on the ball field because there was too many kids that they wouldn't even be able to play. That's what would happen if Noah starts springing up. I can't fill the team because half my team's a Christian and they're all going to be in church somewhere. Well, what you going to do? You're going to figure a way out. They're going to figure a way around it. Noah's need to spring up. It's time to stand up. Culture's squeezing us, church. It's time for the church to stand up and say, God means more than any political party. God means more than any baseball tournament. God means more than anything in our lives. And as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We'll stand out. We'll be different. We're going to be set apart. We'll be a peculiar people. You say, Pastor Darren, you're all fired up this morning. No, let me tell you something. God is stirring my soul. 
with conviction and with fire to tell you what he has laid on my heart. It's time, church. It's past time. My last scripture for the day, and I'm out of time. This is Jesus' words in Matthew 24. Jesus is talking about the return. The return of God, and he says it will be like in the days of Noah. Watch this, Matthew 24. But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will become, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, all the people were eating, they were drinking, they were playing baseball, they were, they were doing all the things that they do, they were marrying, they were giving in marriage, all up until the day that Noah entered the ark, and then it started to rain, and then it was too late, and then they were all killed in the flood. They got lulled to sleep in their corruption, in the violence, in all the things that was going on around them, no one stood up except for one man who was blameless in his generation. So when is the Lord going to return, Pastor Darren? Do you know? Well, I just read. Nobody knows except for the Father. Amen? You know this, you know this scripture. This is a prophetic skip scripture in Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. Go home, read it. It's a great story. It's in red. You should read this. Therefore, keep watch because you don't know on what day or hour the Lord will come. As it was in the days of Noah, chapter, this is verse 37, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. So what was it like in the days of Noah? The Lord saw wickedness was upon man, and it was great in the earth. The earth was also corrupt before God, this is verse 11, and the Lord was filled with violence. God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence. Two times, that same word. If I had time, I'd go ahead and I'd tell you about Ishmael and Hagar. There was a time where Sarah said to Abram, she says, the wrong that you put upon me, it's the same word. The wrong and the violence. The same, the same word in the Hebrew. If you have a Strong's Concordance, I want you to go to it. It's 2555. I've looked at this. I've studied this. I've, I've, I've slept with this. I have, I have read this. I've, 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 just, I've lived with it. When I saw this, my heart leapt. What's it going to be like when the Lord returns? It will be like in the days of Noah. The earth will be full of violence. If you look up that word violence... In the Hebrew, in the original text, it means, it's in your blue letter Bible. If you don't believe me, go check it out. When's the Lord going to return, Pastor? Look around. I've been hearing that I'm in the last days my whole life, and we're a lot closer now than we were when I was a kid. I'm telling you something, people. If you're not feeling the squeeze, you better check your walk. You better check your proximity to the Lord. Because there's a day in which the earth is filled with violence. 2555 in Strong's, the word means, when's the Lord returning? When the earth is filled with Hamas. Violence means Hamas. Anybody ever heard that word? You can't watch any international news that has anything to do with Palestinians and Israel and not hear the word Hamas. The earth was filled with Hamas. I'm telling you, church, we're getting close. And I'm asking our church to check your walk. Make sure you're walking as close as Jameson was walking with me. When you say, Lord, I need to hear your voice. I want to hear you again. I need to know, should I go to the left or to the right? I need my crooked ways to be made straight. I need you in my life, God, because I can't do this alone. Walk with me, God, because the Bible says in the book of James, if you draw near to him, he draws near to you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, for your presence. I acknowledge you in this place. I can't do this without you. 
We cannot walk without you. Father, we need you more than we've ever needed you. For every person in this house that you say, I've asked the Lord to forgive me of my sins and I am a Christian, but I feel like I've strayed. I feel like I'm not as close to him as I once was. I'm not sure that if he was speaking to me right now that I would hear his voice. I just need to draw a little closer to him with every eye closed. Just slip up your hand right fast and let me, let me see it. Thank you. God bless you. There's hands all over the room, all over the room. In the cascade, God bless you, 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 God bless you. God bless you. You can put your hands down. You say, Pastor Deere, I, I know God's probably speaking, but I might be just a little further from him than I need to be. And there's a lot of other voices speaking. I hear them more than I hear his voice. If that's you, just let me see your hand. Put it up and right back down. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Say, Pastor Darren, I want to I want a greater walk with God. I want I need to stand out more in this culture. I need to be the salt. I need to be the light. If that's you, you say, I just need to, to stand out more in this culture. I've been looking too much like the world and not enough like Christ. If that's you, can I see your hand? Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Hands all over the place. We're in the right place. You can put your hands down. All over the place. I know I've spoke what God has placed on my heart. Remember, faith is not a leap in the dark. It's a step into God's light. One last group I want to I want to talk to today. And you say, Pastor Darren, I've appreciated this message. I have felt something in my spirit. I've felt something. I don't know exactly what I'm feeling. I I know I have never asked for forgiveness of my sins, and I know that I need to. I do not want to live apart from God's presence. I would like to go to heaven. I, I don't want to spend my life in eternity in in hell. I want a relationship with God. I need to ask for forgiveness of my sins with every eye bowed, every head every head bowed, every eye closed, no looking around. Can I see your hand? Just slip it up and right back down. Anybody? You say, I need to ask for forgiveness. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, son. Anybody else? I'm looking in the cascades now. To my right, your left. Anybody? On the floor, my right. I don't want to miss anybody. You're doing business with the Lord right now. I see your hand, son. God bless you. We're not going to move too fast right now because this is a holy moment. With everybody, if you could please stand to your feet right now. I know we're in the midst of something that's different and it's a pandemic, but I'm going to tell you, I'm I'm just believing that God is going to move on your heart. There's been several hands for salvation. I want to meet you right over here to my left, to your right. I I want to meet you right over here, and I'm asking you to move right now. If you would like to ask for forgiveness of your sins, I want to say a prayer for you right over here. I'm not going to do anything to embarrass you. I promise you I will not embarrass you. But if you lifted your hand and you say, I need to ask for forgiveness of my sins, I want to pray for you right here. Just move right now. Come on. Come on. Anybody. Anybody. Come on. There were several hands. I know you're here. I know you're here. Just take a step of faith. God's not asking you to take a leap in the dark. He's asking you to take a small step of faith. This is a small step of faith that says, I want to believe in him. I want to have faith in God, and I need forgiveness of my sins. I'm waiting just for another second right here. Anybody wanting to move right now? It won't be too late. In just a moment, I'm going to say a prayer, and the service will be over. You can still meet me right down here, and I can still have that prayer with you. And I just want to say a prayer with every person that lifted your hand for any of these three reasons today right now. In Jesus' name, Father, we come to you. And we say thank you, Father, for every person that needs to take a small step, that needs to acknowledge you in their life, that, that, you would, that they would walk closer with you, that they would open your word and hear your voice speak to them maybe for the first time in years. Maybe they've, 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 they've drifted a little bit. And I pray, Father, that you would start speaking to them, God, that they would start recognizing your voice, that they would start looking different in culture, that they would be countercultural, that they would look different than the rest of the world, that they would follow after your ways, that they would love their neighbor, that it could be seen, that we would be people that would, that would be like Noah in 2020, that we would stand out, be set apart, be a peculiar people, and follow after you. We ask you to walk with us, God, because we know that when we walk with you, you walk with us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.